How can we make the world better? By making ourselves better. The Dr. Joe Show explores how you can make positive personal change by using his groundbreaking and highly effective I Am approach to understand who we are and why we do what we do. Your small changes can have big effects. Join us now for the Dr. Joe Show with Mark Stiles of Stiles Law and your host, Dr. Joe Schrand. Welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. Let's go. Go, go. Let's go. Mark, that was that was a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark has been doing different introductions for our regular guests. You know, you you know that for um, you, for, for four years I did the exact same one with various you know tone differentials and right. frogs in my throat and different yeah. things, and now right. we're just mixing it, up. it, winging mixing it. it, winging it, mixing it up. How's the, how's the week been for you, Mark? How you doing? Good, good. Um, different. Definitely different than uh, the norm. I like to move around, as you know. I like to pace. I like to walk and talk. I like to move and shake, as they say, and uh, haven't been able to do that. So that was interesting. Ish. How about you? How's your week been? It's been been great. Um, everything is really good. Sophie is in San Diego right now. At uh, at a conference, and Becker is. Becca just told me that she uh, she helped add a couple of notes to the Marvel um, introduction. So that that's really helping because she's doing all the Marvel stuff. Yeah. Apparently, the, there's there's a logo, and I don't know if you, you guys know the, the Marvel introduction to all those shows. I have done that, that right. Anyway, she um she had a little bit, and they accepted it. So it's pretty cool. Very cool. She, I heard from her this week. Did you? I did. I did. I reached out knowing that I was going to be constrained uh, to my home. And I said, you know what? It's about time that I learn the introduction that she composed for Feel Good Friday. Um, yeah. Or that I, I commissioned her to create uh, that piece of art for me that is in all of our podcast platforms and various things. And um, so she's sending me the the cord so that I can learn the the groove oh, of her of, of that intro so i'm psyched well, it was cool while connection you're there got your guitar so i'm just before we i'm curious have people been treating you okay at home i mean because this is very different <laughs> your family what do you mean? What well do you mean? I, I just want to know because that really is part of the theme of our show tonight it is okay what happens when your relationship and things sometimes don't go the way they may be planned and so i'm curious we'll get to it but with that, could you introduce our guest for tonight? So you don't want me to answer that question? Then. Yeah, I do. I want you to answer it during it because you'll see there's so many opportunities. Okay, the- cool. So the pressure is <laughs> not on to answer it right now. No. The yes, pressure no. is now on to read the bio for Miss Kelly Miller. Yes. Who is a psychotherapist, best-selling author, and radio host. A second-time guest here on the Dr. Joe Show, Kelly is an author of couples relationship book, Love Hacks simple solutions to your most common relationship issues. This is her most latest book. And she was recently on the Dr. Joe show and an award-winning author of the book thriving with ADHD, which was an amazing episode. Hopefully Thomas for our podcast listeners will link back to that. What an amazing episode that was. I learned a tremendous amount and am looking to learn more tonight. She was also and a relationship host for Balance by Nature TV, and is currently a writer and relationship host for wikihow.com and a columnist for Psychology Today. Kelly was a co-host on LA Talk Radio, an expert radio personality for Sirius XM Radio, the woman's relationship expert for theexaminer.com, and an advice columnist to the largest listserv in the country. She was a freelance writer for over 12 magazines and newspapers. Kelly currently works in a private practice, working with individuals and couples. And if you want to dial up, if you're near the computer, her website is kellymillertherapy.com. Her Facebook handle is Kelly Miller, K-E-L-L-I, Miller Therapy. 
as well as her Instagram handle. Welcome back to the show, Kelly Miller. The gang is back together. Thank yes. you so much for having me. Yeah, it is great having you here. And and you've done so much. Um, the Attention Deficit book we know is huge, but Love Hacks, how, how did you get the idea to write this one? So I kept having couples come into my office and they were presenting the same issues over and over again. And I thought, this is great. They're coming into office. But what about the couples who can't afford therapy or don't have time for therapy? And how can we help those couples? And I also saw a need. I think there's a lot of couples workbooks out there that are they're long and arduous. And I felt like we needed quick and easy solutions, especially if you're in a crisis. And that's how it came to be. It's, um, it's really great. And there's so many pearls of wisdom in this. Uh, you know, we were just talking about Mark and, and the change in, in family because he's, I mean, he's usually all over the place, right? Uh -huh. But now are people looking after you, Mark? What's, what's... Oh, yes. I mean, I have the most amazing, supportive, loving family that a, a, a guy could ever want, you know, led by a nurse, wife, mother. So immediately you've you've got that and and the safety and security around it, too. Right. So there's that. It's it's different, though. You know, Dr. Joe, it's like I'm, I'm I, I feel bad. Right. <laughs> because there's certain tasks and responsibilities that I'm normally the one to handle and that those loads have to be be passed along to others now. So, you know, that that works that that scratches Hard at me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And but you know, no complaints and you know the surgery went well. So, you know, things are going well and there's a positive uh, atmosphere that, you know, we'll get through this. We get through this together and all that. But it's it's change, right? Nobody loves change necessarily and and you know we're doing the best we can right the yeah. i am it's the i am it's true and you 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 know you, you have an injury your your body responds it's still doing the best it can which is a collection of cells but i was wondering because i know you do so many things and one of the chapters in the book the is best. i do so many chores yeah um so and that's that's where people may not have an excuse but Kelly, I mean, can we can we start off with that? Because I'm yeah. sure that resonates with a lot of people. I've heard so many times people fighting over how to load the dishwasher. It's really it's one of those things. But yeah, it's it's one of those things that I consistently heard was this idea of I do more chores. And, you know, couples, partners were starting to keep this mental tally. Okay, well, I've done this and I've done that. So one of the things that the the hacks that I wanted to talk about was creating a chore chart. Let's make it really simple and easy. Let's come together and sit down and talk about what are the strengths. Okay, I do this best, you do this best. Let's let's write it down and then we can even alternate weeks. And then we'll put it on the refrigerator and nobody has to be the police or nobody has to nag. It's right there front and center. And and there it's even, right? We don't have to keep that mental tally anymore. Yeah. It's a it's a great suggestion, folks. I'm sure Many people are out there listening, going, "Hey, that happens to me." Uh -huh. So, so let's let's get right. So, how do people get the book first? Because there's so much sure. wisdom in it. Yes, and by the way, that chore chart you can download it uh, from my website, uh, Kelly Miller Therapy, and Kelly with an I. And that way, you can just print it out and less work. Yeah, so people can find the book online at any of the bookstores. It's called Love Hacks, and yeah, really, I just I wanted to create the top fifteen most common relationship issues and three solutions to each to make it really simple so that couples can be more connected and work together and yeah, and have a deeper relationship. Yeah. Which is really what it's all about. It comes down to, you know, respect and value. And when you don't feel respected or valued, man, you yes. build limbic. And that can, that can just lead to all sorts of things. Can I, when I, I, Talk, you know, a child psychiatrist. So, what I suggest to parents, though, is instead of using the word chore, uh -huh. you use the word contribution. Oh, I uh, it's not necessarily the same in this, but 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 I think it is. You know, it's uh -huh. a, I'm contributing a chore. When a parent gives a kid a chore, it's it's a, that power differential. But when you say you're contributing to the house, 
<laughs> that increases a person's sense of value. And I think that, you know, love hacks, it's, it really comes down to that about how do we remind our partner that they are valuable? Yes. You know? and, and that contribution is so powerful. And I am so honored that I have sponsors that contribute to us every time. So what I'd like to do is, is hear their contribution. Uh, Larry, take away. We'll be right back with the Dr. Joe Show. Hey, folks. Thank you for listening to the Dr. Joe Show. We've been investigating whether or not we want to bring sponsors into our podcast. What are your thoughts? Do you know somebody who might be a good partner with the Dr. Joe Show, who may want to align their product or service with the Dr. Joe Show? Think about it. And we are back with the Dr. Joe Show with Kelly Miller, psychotherapist and author, author of Love Hacks, Simple Solutions to Your Most Common Relationships Issues. Yeah, not Love Hurts like the 80s song. <laughs> love Hacks, Simple Solutions to Your Most Common Relationship Issues. Yeah. I wish and everybody I, would do that intro, like with the singing. It makes the book sound better. <laughs> yeah, it would. It really would. Who was the I, artist I of that it, song? It's important for people to understand, right, that that there's going to be conflict in relationships. I mean, it would be silly to think they're on. That, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem. But once it happens, how do you talk about it? I mean, that's the opening to the book is communication. Sure. So help us with that. Yeah. One of the main issues that I constantly kept hearing was my partner isn't listening to me. And so one of the first things is I want to educate people that there is a distinct difference between hearing and listening. Mm. And hearing is involuntary. We hear the dog barking. We hear the doorbell. Listening is focused intent on hearing what the person is saying. And so I think when people say you're not listening to me, it's not that the person's not hearing, it's that they're not getting it. They're not feeling seen or valued. So we really have to make that a priority so that our partners can feel seen and heard. So one of the methods that I talk about in Love Hacks is something I call the fast food communication technique. And if you think about it, when you go to a fast food drive through they want to make sure that they get your order correct. So they repeat it back to you. The order is even on the screen. And I want partners to do that same thing. I want them to make sure that they heard correctly what their partner said. And so it's really simple. It's just stating what I heard you say is. So hey. not only does that ensure accuracy, but it also makes our partner feel immediately validated. And I think sometimes we're quick to defend. And so when you say what I'm hearing you say, it allows for that pause. So you don't immediately jump in and give feedback or get defensive. It just allows for a moment for your partner to have that be their situation, right? Let, just hear me out. And so I think it's a really simple but effective hack. It, what I'm hearing is that makes yes, what I'm hearing mistakes. you say is, yeah. What I'm hearing you say, yeah. Well, it, um, and then it gives them the opportunity to clarify if you're not hearing them and exactly. correctly, right? Right, which is part of communication. Right. Critical, critical. From your experience, what creates that first erosion in the communication? Uh, How does that happen? I mean, I think there's a variety of factors, but one yes. thing I'm hearing a lot is this idea that, you know, my partner comes in and they're giving me solutions and I just want to vent. So I think there's but this big difference between he using somebody like as a sounding board versus feedback. And so I always say to partners, tell your partner what you want. For right now, I just want you to be a sounding board. Can you just listen to me? Or I'd love your feedback after I'm done. Can you give it to me? So because sometimes I think partners feel like they're being very helpful by giving advice or insight but that other person may feel like, oh, I, that means I don't know what I'm doing or I'm self-conscious or they always tell me what to do. So I think there's just, you know, I'd rather partners be inquisitive and ask, do you want feedback? Do you want a sounding? Like making sure that they're both on the same page. But I think that's one simple thing that they can do to, to ensure that everybody is on the same page. I hate to, to go to the gender part, but is there a gender component to this? Because remember there used to be 
something years ago, some book about men and women and men are from Mars, something like that. And yeah. the idea was that, that there are were, there were problem solvers. There are people right. who are, are given information. They think that they have to solve the problem. And others who are just really good at listening. Is there a gender component or is that, is that a myth? I think typically what you're talking about is men are more logical and they want to come up with a solution. They see their partner in pain and they want to help. It's it's clear. Okay, let me help solve this, right? And I think there's evolutionary material behind that. It makes complete sense. But yeah, that that is typically what you see. And so I think it's a little bit harder for the men to to sit back and and just kind of listen and not do much because they feel purposeless. And so, you know, we need those reminders of, you know, thank you so much. Listening would just help me so much. That would be enough for me, you know, where that triggers the the typical male brain to be like, okay, I can just sit back and listen. Right. right. This, this reminds me of a, a tremendously funny uh, clip I've seen on social media. I don't know if you've seen it, where the woman has a, a nail in her forehead. Uh-huh. And she is explaining to her partner I don't, I, in my head, it's, 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 it hurts and I'm pulling my sweaters and they're, and they're getting all tangled and he's trying to solve, he's like, um, can I just <laughs> get that out of your, mm -hmm. for, you don't, you're always trying to solve the problem uh -huh. and it's, it's, oh, so, it's, That's it's great. really funny if you could find it. So I'm going to find it, <laughs> it but it, it's true. I, I, think, I'm, I saw that my whole goal is to solve, like, how do we get to the, no, let's move right. the needle, let's solve this and, and. And right. It's it. coming from wonderful intentions. Let me help you. I see you're struggling. Let me help you. And so if we can view it that way, I think people wouldn't get so frustrated. You're always telling me what to do. It's like, no, no, no. My partner's trying to help me here. Right. right. And, and I think for those people who want to just find a solution, it, it is a solution. To listen, because as soon you're as you're right. doing that, you're empowering that other person, you're treating them with respect and value. Mm -hmm. And that respect and value alone calms down, you know, a limbic brain. Yes. So you can then really address whatever may be going on and just right. listening. I, I, I guess, I guess it's sort of unfair of me to say that because that's my job, you know, is, is to listen. I mean, that's what I've been trained how to do. Mm -hmm. But for our listeners, it's really not that difficult. Right. You, you just listen and that what I'm hearing you say right. is so powerful. Um, that sort of gets to the difference between I and you. Can you talk about, yep. talk about that between the I and you statements and how that sure. can sometimes contribute to the tension that we see? Yes. Wording can make such a big difference. And if we use our words kindly, our partners are going to be more receptive. So typically in an argument, you may hear, you did this, you're always late, and you're using you statements. And so what I talk about in Love Hacks is using those I statements, getting vulnerable. I feel hurt when you came home late. And there's such a difference. Our partners can hear that. And, oh, okay. So she's upset or he's disappointed. And then they can they can go in and they can help you in a much better way or own up to their part versus once people feel attacked or blamed, it, they, their defenses go up and and then that creates a lot of conflict. So it's a simple it, shift in wording that can make a huge difference. Yeah, but what, what is that? Do you think when when we say you know you're doing this, you're doing that, and uh -huh. it activates as you say that that defensive part? Well, why yeah. do you think that is? Why does that happen? I think we're primed to 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 be on the defense. We feel attacked. We feel criticized, and so you know that that impulse is to defend, right? To that ego gets bruised, and you're like, no, 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 I'm going to tell you, and 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 yeah. But I, you know, if you approach it in a softer way, then the other person is kind of softer. It's like, oh, okay, I understand that. You know, my partner's hurt. If I look at it that way, versus I did something wrong, I'm bad, and so I think yeah. sometimes people hear it in that way, and then they go into that. To that primal brain. Is yeah. that the slippery slope of the mirror neurons that you talk about as well, where it's you, ah, well, rah, you, rah, rah, yeah. all of a sudden you're down this rabbit hole of chaos. Is that the amygdala? Like that, that part going off? The mirror neurons and, and also the mirror neurons are sort of 
arguably right behind the prefrontal cortex, where we mirror other people's feelings. Fun. Yes, Mark, I, th I think that has a lot to do with it. But again, you can step back and say, wow, right. what's going on here? And I wonder whether, whether you could go back to the first chapter and say, what, what I'm hearing you say is right. you're blaming me. I'm, I I'm really sorry that, I mean, right. can, we can merge all these things. You know, Absolutely. Right. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that was the goal of, of writing the book for me was, you know, you don't have to use all the tools. Even if you use one or two tools, it's helpful, right? And it can help your partnership. I was hoping yeah. that, yeah, it would be simple enough to use a couple tools. Yeah. I'm just thinking of, of how my wife and I communicate. It's really, it's been great. Carol is, is very Perfect. good at this. Um, and it, it really changes the dynamic folks i mean it doesn't need to be a power differential and we we are the, the fact that a person feels like they're getting blamed and they get defensive there's a, another reframe to that it means it does mean you sort of care what the other person thinks about you still and that and what you're hearing is that they're blaming you and right. you don't really like that but taking responsibility is different than blame yes. and that, that, that's a really big part of of that difference between the I and the you statements, you know, it's right. being responsible. Well, I think people forget how taking accountability pays dividends. It's like, I think we're embarrassed. We made a mistake. We don't want to own it. But once that happens, our partners are much more forgiving than we, you know, we, we forget that they're going to forgive you because you've owned it. You've taken your part. And then I think it's good modeling for the other person. Okay. My partner has owned his part. So yeah, I will do that next time. I can see that that he or she did it, so I can do it. So, so that, in, go, on, go on, Mark. And that requires vulnerability. It does. It's not easy. It's not easy. But that's a true, authentic relationship, right? That's what it is. We're imperfect. We're imperfect humans. We're going to do imperfect things. So we might as well own it. That that's and that's going to create that that deeper connection rather than pretending to be perfect and I'm always on and yeah that that's not going to have that genuine relationship that we want. Yeah, and, and vulnerability implies trust as well. Right. Yes. That that you can be vulnerable with people that ultimately you know respect and value you. And we do make mistakes. It's still an I am. I mean, I am is never saying that you're going to be perfect. You're mm -hmm. always doing the best you can, but sometimes you screw it up. Yes. And you, you take responsibility for that because you have an impact on everyone. Mm -hmm. To control no one, you influence everyone. And we right. can... We can have remarkable influences on our partners and empower them too, which is part of what our sponsors do for us, which is very nice. They, they are our partners. They empower us. Uh, Larry, can we take a break and, and hear about some of these empowerments from our sponsors? We'll be right back with the Dr. Joe Show. Hey, folks, welcome back. So any thoughts? Do you listen to other podcasts? Do you see how they do the sponsors? Is there a way that they're utilizing sponsors that you enjoy or you don't enjoy? I listen to Smartless and I really enjoy how the co-hosts share the voiceover for the product or service. It's really funny for the most part, but it's unique. It's them really endorsing. Does that work? What do you think? And we are back. With the Dr. Joe Show, with an amazing guest who's been on the Dr. Joe Show before. Her name is Kelly Miller. She's written a book, Thriving with ADHD, which was a previous episode on the Dr. Joe Show. However, tonight we're talking about her latest book, Love Hacks, Simple Solutions to Your Most Common Relationship Issues. Mark, I think you should do the intro. I, I understand. Every time. You know, that the, <laughs> the, uh, the book may, may become an audio book as well, Kelly. You were saying one fire that, that you Yes, but I need it. Mark to do the, the, the singy songy part of it. I, I'm thinking that, absolutely. So I, go I Googled it while we were off air. It was um, this, this one hit wonder, Nazareth, from <laughs> I think the 80s. Do you remember that song? Love it was Love Hurts. Love Hurts? Okay. Love Hurts. Oh, yeah. Love Hurts. I can't sing, but yeah, I know exactly what <laughs> you're talking either. about. Yeah, that's yeah. a great song. Yeah. Nazareth's Larry for the next coming in, if you hear me. <laughs> well, that, that would be so much fun to do that. Um, and so a lot of this stuff doesn't have to hurt, though, right? No, 
has not if you read this book and you figure it out you know you might not be able to access therapy you might not be able to access uh what you need but you could certainly access this book and get some nuggets out of it maybe all of the nuggets but if you get one nugget out of it but, oh my you're that much better right but but i think it, it means you have to acknowledge that maybe there's something that you need to work on in your relationship doesn't everybody I mean, acknowledge that though mm, i don't know it's but typically Kelly. right what do you think Do people no, nothing's no. perfect all right well i think i mean I think there is this illusion that we have to be this happy couple. And, you know, I think that was another reason I wrote the book was, okay, you can be a really great couple and maybe struggling with a couple hot topics. We all do. That's normal. Right? There's going to be issues that are going to be triggering, maybe from our past or, you know, something like that. And so, yeah, it's okay. We all have things that we want to work on. But I think you're right. That first step is we could have a better connection if we examine this, we figure out some solutions to it. And that was, yeah, one of the main reasons I wrote it. So would it be good for couples to read it together? Like, like make a little I, book club of it? Absolutely. Ideally, I think that would be wonderful. And I've also realized there are going to be partners who don't want to join in, and that's okay too. And so I really made it for either case, because I do mm -hmm. think that you can get something out of it as an individual, even out of a relationship, right? We can all work on our communication. We can all work on ways to control anger, things like that. So I, I think it's beneficial for both the individual and the couple. Yeah. And, and speaking of anger, there's the chapter we are constantly arguing. Uh, mm -hmm. but can we talk a little bit about that? First of all, what's the arguments usually about? Uh, right. And how do we manage that? Sure. Arguments are very normal in relationships. And you do hear about couples who never argue and my red flag kind of goes off because I'm like, well, are, you know, are they being truly authentic in this relationship or is one person people pleasing and they're not stating their needs? So we're going to go up against each other. We are wired differently and that's OK. Right? But I think where this chapter comes in is, are you consistently arguing? Are there, you know, and that shows me, OK, we have we have an issue here. So the first step for me is managing that anger. And how we do that, it starts physically. So if you notice that you are talking with your partner and your face is getting flushed, you are clenching your hands, your jaw, you get a stomach ache, headache, heart beating, any of those things, that's kind of going to be your first sign of, uh-oh, I'm, I'm getting triggered here. And one of the main things I talk about in Love Hacks is taking a time out. And it sounds yeah. punitive and it's not. It is really a way for you to recenter. So if you're getting flooded, you're getting angry, this conversation is not going to be fruitful on either side. And so if we can view it that way, it's like, okay, yes, it's going to be a win-win for both of us because both people are going to be more receptive if we're calm and centered. So utilizing a timeout is really simply agreeing beforehand when it's neutral ground, you have a conversation with your partner. If either one of us gets heated, Let's agree that we can take a time out. And so we agree to these rules and you can agree upon the, the assigned time, two hours, whatever works. But whoever calls the time out is then responsible to reconvene and say, okay, ready to, to recover this conversation. It's not an excuse to not talk about it ever again. It's just a way for us to, to get centered again and calm and then have a, a better conversation. And I think yeah. that'll be super helpful. But having that previewed is, I think, so critical. So you can anticipate because otherwise you might feel like the person is just like walking out on me. Absolutely. Uh, they me. might feel rejected. Yes. Right. right? Like, well, well, you don't want to deal with this? You know, what the heck is going on? Exactly. And that's why I always say you have to have this conversation on neutral when you're okay. This is a conversation because it's very hard in the moment. But, you know, it's that reminder that this is not a form of rejection. This is not, this is recognizing, hey, we're not going to get anywhere here. Nobody's ever had a very successful conversation when there's yelling and screaming going on. So it, it's yeah. that reminder. And you can even say, if you have a partner that gets triggered by that, you I always tell couples who struggle with this, you can sit, remind your partner, hey, I still love you. I'm still in this, but I think it'll be better for both of us if we take a time out. You know, something like that, that reinforces mm -hmm. the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what you describe is the cortisol response, you know, where you get this massive wave of a fight, flight, freeze response, and you're thinking you're 
you have to defend yourself against the saber two tigers. You do all these things, but you're right. But if you're doing it, everyone's doing it. So I think the idea of using your prefrontal cortex, anticipating the future, mm -hmm. let's set these boundaries, these parameters. Don't take it personally. This is actually going to help us. It's it's so valuable. Um, one of the things that I've done in my couples work is people will say, you know, we argue all the time. Uh -huh. right? like, and I, I say to the ones, do you agree with that? Then, we argue with that? And the other one says, yeah, uh, do you agree with that? I said, <laughs> when's the last time you got agreed on anything? Uh, you know, this is great. You finally agreed on something. Let's start there. Uh huh. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, all right, we have common ground to start and then we could talk about what's well, not that's working. Right. Yeah. That's exactly it. You know, um, there are so many other things. What about using humor to diffuse some of these things? And how yes. can you tell yeah, them? Well, one of the things I talk about in Love Hacks is something I call quick partner connections. And I think that we are we think, oh, we have to do these huge things to feel connected to our partner. And I want to dispel that myth. We do not. And so I created an acronym called TEAS. And so T is for traditions. I want couples to come up with a tradition that's just for them, whether that's good morning kiss, good night kiss, or we talk about five grateful things we have today. E is for efforts. Can we do something small but meaningful for our partner without even telling them? I'm going to make them coffee. I'm going to scrub, you know, scrub the ice off the car. I'm going to you know, do something simple. A is for acknowledgments. Can we tell our partner what they mean to us? Handwritten note, a little text, verbally. S is for silly, what you were talking about. You know, we're so serious all the time. Like, let's make it lighthearted again. Can we talk in a foreign accent to our partner? Throw them off, you know, it's something fun. Or if you're not that type of personality, can you go to a comedy club? Can you bring back some of that humor into the relationship? And then E is erotic. And, you know, sex doesn't start, you know, in the bedroom. It starts beforehand. So can we send a steamy text? Or again, if you're shy, can you just send a, a really sensual poem? something to, okay. to start. So that's, you know, really quick and easy ways to feel connected to our partners without a ton of effort. It's, it's so important. It's, it really resonates with me, Kelly, because when, when Sophie was getting married, my eldest daughter getting married, um, I wrote a song and she and I sang it together instead of doing a father-daughter dance because I'm not a good dancer. And um, it's, it's called, It's the Little Things That Matter. Oh, I love that. You know, oh. It's the little things you say. You know? Yeah. And, it's, and it's, it's so true, folks. It is those little things because what does it mean? It means you've been thinking about that person. Right. Exactly. Yes. And that thinking about them means they respect you, they value they they think mm -hmm. about you. You know, Aww. it's you have um, to send me that video I want to see now of you two. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, a friend in my, my son in didn't know, so we, we surprised him. So it's a nice oh, surprise him with it, and people's crying. I was just gonna say, everyone is gonna be waterworks in that scenario, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but again, it gets to that point that you're talking about is it doesn't need to be this huge thing, right? It's this little thing. Mm -hmm. That's someone know, like taking them coffee or, right? you know. But I think, yeah, I mean, we can take our partner for granted, but doing those things, the, you know, little things mean so much. It's exactly what you're saying. It really does. It, it fills me with joy just thinking about it. It really does, you know, mm -hmm. oxytocin rush. Yes. Being so connected. And that's really what it is. And that oxytocin, there's, you know, that's the the happiness, but there's also pleasure. Really um, so I know we've got a, a mixed audience, but let's talk a little bit about that. There's a chapter in there about sensate and then, you know, yes. we don't have sex anymore. Let's, mm -hmm. let's give our yeah. audience a little bit of a, yeah, some, of course, them tips here. Mark, remember that song? Let's talk about sex, baby. The, oh, uh, yeah. the 90s song. Exactly. Now, now I'm, I'm all thinking about songs. It's so <laughs> fun. Uh, so it's, it's very normal for sex to ebb and flow in relationships, especially in long-term relationships. So I just want to normalize that piece. And obviously if you're stressed or if you've got things going on, it's not always going to be balanced. But yeah, if there is a real diminished 
sex drive on either end, it's time to look at it. And so, yeah, one of my recommendations, exactly what you said, I love sensate focused therapy. And I, I recommend that to couples where if sex feels really overwhelming or they haven't had it in years and it's really scary to think about, or there's been sexual trauma, and it's a really beautiful five-step technique that focuses on sensation rather than sex or orgasm. Mm-hmm. It's really about that physical touch and what is my partner's texture of their skin like and what's the temperature of their skin. And so it's it's a really beautiful way to connect on that physical level without it be, being so overwhelming. So I think that's a good place to start if there's not been sex for a very long time. And then yeah. on the flip side, if 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 you just feel like you've kind of like lost the spark a little bit, one thing that I recommend is adrenaline filled activities. And they've done yeah. studies that show that if you do those type of activities, it can connect you to feeling closer. So rock climbing or a theme park with roller coasters or even something new, like we haven't tried woodworking or, you know, something different, horseback riding, you know, something that we haven't tried where you can bring back some of that excitement and remind each other, oh yeah, this is, this is cool. And I feel that passion again with you. And so those are a couple, couple tips. Yeah. Yeah. That, that idea of doing something new. I mean, my, um, my kids have certainly learned that they actually do rock climbing, but, but they, they find something new to do, especially uh, Jason and Liz. I mean, they're my, my eldest son and, and his okay. fiance. They're always telling us these things about oh, really? these, these crazy things that they're doing. Like they, they wanted to learn how to play the Bach cover or something. And, and it was just like, mm. it's, it seems so silly, but but it's they're so happy together. I love that. Yes, it's, and creating both. such great experiences and memories. That's wonderful. Yes. they yeah. really are. It's it's really great, and you know it's it's not you know sensei, but but we have we have sponsors who create incredible memories for us as well by by keeping us alive here on the show. So no. with that in mind, let's um. Let's hear from our sponsors, Larry. We'll be right back with the Dr. Joe Show. Hey, welcome back. And again, we're super grateful for you listening to the Dr. Joe Show. If you have anyone that you think might be a good sponsor, shoot us an email at drjoepodcast at gmail.com. D-R-J-O-E podcast at gmail.com. Give us your thoughts about the show, too. We're wondering, are we talking to the trees or are people really gaining value in this? Please let us know. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of the show. And welcome back. Welcome back to the Dr. Joe Show with second time guest, Kelly Miller, psychotherapist and author, author of Thriving with ADHD, which was our first episode. And now today we are talking love hacks, simple solutions to your most common relationship issues. Yeah, it's great. Kelly with an eye, folks. So if you're Kelly with an eye, Kelly with an eye. Um, there's so many other parts to this book, including, you know, I don't think I'm in love with my partner anymore. That one, how do you, how do you manage that one? That's got to be a tough one. Yeah, I think, and you can explain the science better than I can around this, but in the beginning of a relationship, all of those hormones that you've talked about, oxytocin, dopamine, all of these hormones happen. And I think we try to compare that feeling in a long-term relationship. And so one thing I do in that chapter is really just educate. We're not going to feel what we first felt. It's impossibly, it's impossible to sustain that level. So that's the first piece. I think we want to compare what it felt like. I don't feel like that anymore. That means I'm not in love anymore. And so yeah. I try to explain that there's there's two different types of love, right? There's that beginning passionate lust. It's exciting. And then as you go through time, it becomes companion love, meaning you know true intimacy, security, stability. So I think if we can reframe it just to start in that way, couples can say, oh, okay, yeah, I had that passion part and that's great. But you know, over time, wow, I'm really valuing this other part, this stability, this security, that type of thing. And I think that's that's one helpful tip in the beginning that can help couples. Yeah, really important. But how do you how do you help them understand that so that they don't 
look out somewhere else because you've got a chapter right. on fidelity as well. Right, exactly. I think it's the reminder of why did you fall in love with your partner in the first place? There's mm -hmm. a reason. And we need to come back to that. So one of the the hacks and love hacks is I have my couples write love letters to each other, talking about how they fell in love, why they fell in love. And it's that reminder, oh yeah, I remember. I really liked this or that about them. And so, you know, and, and and once the, there's pen to the paper, there's something really special about that and seeing it on paper. Well, give really beautiful memories of, of what it was like and can kind of take it into the present. Yeah. It's, it's funny because, um, you know, I, I love to write and when I, I can't tell you how many little poems that I've written for Carol, just, yeah. you know, I just leave it as a note. Oh. You know, I, you know, leave because I've got to go to work. And, okay. um, and it's, it's remarkable. I think I've, I must admit, I, I, I feel truly blessed. I know Carol knows this, but mm. I, I still feel that oh, wow. you know, 19 years old. And when, when I saw oh. first walk across the room to. God, I wish she was on the show. I'd want to like hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure well, she'd melt with this. It's so I, sweet. Not, she, she well, what I'm hearing you say, which is good for our listeners, is you really appreciate and value her. Yep. And, you know, it's it sounds like you really are able to see all the good. And yes, we all have our imperfections and quirks and different things, but you're really taking the whole, she's wonderful and, you know, taking her for, taking her for who she is. And it's just really beautiful to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And, and we luckily models it for our kids. So our kids know to, you know, to be kind, to Probably. care about someone. This is what, this is what the world could be in well, uh, and, uh, you know, full disclosure, I mean, I come from a family where my parents got divorced. I mean, they were, <laughs> was anger all the time, right? all the time. My mother used to say she was a divorcee, but always wanted to be a widow. Uh -huh. That was her, that was wow. her, uh -huh. her life, you know, but it doesn't need to be that way. You know, we're. We have so much to talk about, but I, want, I actually want to get to the two questions, the two truths of the I am, mm -hmm. so that we have time to discuss it, because I think we're talking about it all the time. The, the I am is saying we're always doing the best we can, right? and yep. we don't have to like it, don't have to condone it, but uh -huh. let's look again at who we are, why we do what we do. You take the words, look again, reverse them, again, look, again, to repeat something, look like a spectator, to respect someone, which leads them to feel valued. We all want to feel valued. Four domains, the home domain, the social domain, we've been talking about those, the biological domain and the I see, how I see myself, how I think someone sees me. And we're all interested in what other people think or feel about us because you know it feels different when you feel respected or disrespected. Okay. So the four domains interact. A small change in any domain can have a big effect. Mm -hmm. So given our topic for tonight, Kelly, what small change can you recommend to our listeners? Yeah, I love that you developed this concept. It's it's beautiful. For me, it's very simple. And I put this in love hacks. It's assuming oh. positive intentions about our partners. Man. What happens is, you know, they do something and it's like, oh, they're trying to annoy me or I can't believe they did this again. And if we reframe that, assuming positive intentions about our partner, oh, it's possible that they had a really bad day today. Or oh, maybe they felt overwhelmed and couldn't clean up the dishes. I'll give it to them. You know, that can make a huge difference. And if it's too hard to assume positive intent, even neutral, I would rather that than the negative, right? They're, they're out to get me. They're always doing this, that type of thing. And that's just a really small but really powerful uh, change that can take place and help couples. Mm. So how, how would someone do that? I mean, I think you've given a couple of examples, yep. but there's so many people where the anger is just so right. overwhelming. Right. Uh, we step back from that. Well, I think you remind yourself, yeah, you are a unit, right? You are not, in, in, yes, you're individuals in this relationship, but you are a team, a partnership, and no one is winning first place at being the best individual in this. It's like, I want you to to win first place at being the best couple. So it's that reminder, we're, we're in a collaboration here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's figure out how to communicate the best together. And let's, you know, both together assume positive intentions and positive behavior begets positive behavior. So if I'm kind to my partner, 
they're going to be kind back to me. So we have to remember that piece. So if you can model that your partner, they're going to be able to do it back to you. Mm -hmm. Just to some people that, you know, who don't do this, are they in some ways just trying to get out of the relationship that, you know, because that's okay too. Yeah, if exactly. It's really not going to work. You know, you don't right. want to get, you know, because you also talk about that, that it can get to the point where it really becomes abusive. Right. Correct. No, I agree with you. Yeah. And that's and that's okay too. If you recognize, hey, this partnership isn't working, right? I mean, I'm in the business of helping couples stay together, but you're right. There comes a point where, especially if there is abuse or, you know, that, that it's no longer serving you and that's okay. Um, but again, I think we can always treat people with kindness and respect in in the partnership and exiting the partnership. Yeah. Mark, you got some thoughts on this? You're pensive. I'm taking it all in, Dr. Joe, taking it all in. But I, I can see where there's a snowballing effect if, um, you know, you think, oh, they're out to get me and they're definitely out to get me. And they're, they're see, I knew they were out to get me. And well, well, all of a sudden right. that beginning, that or origin of miscommunication yes. spirals. Yeah. Yeah. Sure can. And that, I think, gets to the second truth of the I am, you know. Because everybody has one, because everyone is interested through their high C domain the way you see them. And that has an effect on their biological domain because it does feel different when you feel respected mm -hmm. or disrespected. The second truth of the I am, you control no one, you influence everyone. You get to choose the kind of influence you want to be. Kelly Miller, author of award-winning books and now I Love Hacks. What kind of influence do you want to be? Oh, I love this question. When I read that question, the first thing that came to mind was, I want to be a positive influence. I think that's really what it comes down to. I think just, you know, I'm in a profession to help people. And I, I'm thinking I want to I want to continue to do that, whether that's working with individuals or couples or just on a macro level and just remind remind people of kindness and positive intentions and and thing of that things of that sort. Um, and I hope that that's what I can carry on. Yeah. And then do you also hope that, that you are modeling that for other people? So for that sure. So we can begin doing that. And again, Mark, getting back to mirror neurons, you know. Right. We, we okay. can activate other people's mirror neurons. Yes. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, I hope I can mirror that for sure. Yeah, because I have to practice what I'm preaching for sure. Yeah. And, and when you're doing this in the sessions. What's the experience like for you right. as you're doing this? I think it's really beautiful when I see the progress of couples or when I see their vulnerability. Right? Again, I see these egos fighting with each other. And once we kind of get down to, you know, what's what's this affecting in you? And you see them soften and open up and see that vulnerability. That's what I love. Because it's like we're all human and you know, at the core. And so let's, let's go down to that level and talk about it and get there. And so that's the piece that I love where I see that human elephant element instead of that protective piece. Mm -hmm. What's been the most challenging case for you? I mean, you don't need to go into the details, but uh -huh. are there certain things that seem more challenging and do you ever give up hope? You know, I'm so happy when people come into my office because to me it shows they they want to get help, right? They're they're there's some sort of interest in helping. And so sometimes I worry about people who not not coming into my office more. But yeah. the more challenging is is I have a couple who is, I mean, they scream at the top of their I mean, I literally thought about getting a whistle and being a referee <laughs> in there and kind of, you know, trying to calm everybody down. Um, but that's hard because you could tell like that's their dynamic, right? There's a ton of fire. And so what I said to them was, you know, can we use this fire and passion that you have, but let's put it through the bedroom. You have, you know, there, there is fire and there's passion here. And they kind of looked away from me and then was like, oh, okay. And so we can just channel it in different ways uh, to help couples. Yeah. It's, it's such a wonderfully optimistic and positive outlook, Kelly. It really is. And I totally agree and resonate with it. You know, we live in a world where there's so much tension. Yes. Um, there's so much conflict and yet we can do something about it. We really, we really do influence everyone. You, um, you get to choose. 
you know, every time you remind someone of their value, you increase your own value. I know. That's what we really want to do. You know, Phil, this has been so great. Thanks so much for coming on the show again. Folks, you can get the book, Amazon, anywhere. Get it. Get it. And Audible. Even if you, yes. And Audible. Even if you don't need it, some else you know may need it. Thank you so much. I really loved being on again. Great. Great show. Thanks for coming week. back. What did she do?